Welcome to Daily Seven, where we talk about sports, fashion, everything in between. We are on episode four. I'm your host, Infamous Missy. Let me uh, introduce the guys here. I got Ray. Where are you at? Ray in uh, Arizona. I ain't in Miami today. I'm in AZ. So. <laughs> you in AZ, bro? Yeah, I'm still in Mobile, man. I'm still Hi. out here in Welcome. Alabama. Welcome, Ray and Ty. Let's get going. Look, you know, this is going to be a tough, tough conversation after uh, – after these playoff eliminations this week. Uh, but getting to it, we'll get to that later today. All right. So back to Sir Sean Combs. After months in court, Diddy has withdrew his lawsuit against Diageo, which is the parent company of De Leon and Ciroc, accusing them of racism by not following investment promises on the brands. Uh, Ray, you were you spoke more about that. Yeah, yeah. So I think probably four months ago, he had did a live interview with uh, Earn Your Leisure. It's like two guys that talk like business for the okay. black people and culture and different things like that. And he was explaining to it. He didn't go into deep details, but what he was saying is we all thought that Ciroc was owned by Diddy, which we found out that it's really not owned by him because we were insinuating that based off of him saying, you know, Ciroc owned by a black man. So he went in depth a little bit on it. He was saying that the contractual agreement that he had with Ciroc was that he's going to promote Ciroc, but on the back end, they were going to be, you know, pr- producing and preparing his Delion liquor. Yeah. Um, he okay. actually didn't see any type of, you know, huge production on it. So he sent the guy out to Mexico where most people do, you know, have their, uh, wine and production, all as in, like, um, was a short you're saying, um, or kind of just like production product, yeah, getting his product okay. made as far as for his liquor. So, when he sent out the guy, the guy went, I guess, I don't, I'm not a big liquor person, I don't drink, but tell me if I'm right, how they it's like a flower that's supposed to, or plant or something that's supposed to be grown. They wasn't growing his stuff as if they were telling what they was telling him. So, the information he was getting from Ciroc wasn't correct and he kind of like was i guess mad about it because he's like hey i'm promoting y'all brand saying it's right. owned by a black man and you guys agree that you guys are going to be producing my deli on and it's not so being produced is. so he did so the basically lawsuit. they're just not they weren't living up to the agreements that they that they had promised um right. do you feel like couple so question do you feel like they kind of took advantage of the situation with the fact that Diddy has gone through those allegations at the moment. I think we always get taken advantage of. And that's why I kind of put this into like the business and culture thing today, because I feel like instead of us coming together, like you got Kevin Hart, you got, you got Diddy, you got Rick Ross, all these people. But what we do is when we go into huge businesses, we have that, you know, nothing against any type of race or anything like that. We got to go get that other race to kind of put us on that pedestal in that lane. So I feel like instead of it, we, we go and we get into these businesses, which I don't know too much about liquor, but I just feel like it's the same with the entertainment business, right? We go get into the liquor business. Instead of coming together collectively, we go try to get help from there. And we thinking we're doing the right thing, but at the end, we always get messed up, messed over at the end. I feel like it's more of a, I feel like they wait for something like that to happen, to be honest with you. I feel like, uh, especially with a lot of uh, black business owners. I feel like when they go into business with these people, I feel like they kind of wait and sit patiently for you to mess up so that, you know, they can take it all, all away from you. So, I mean, especially with what all Diddy got going on right now, I ain't even surprised that, you know, that they went that route with him. I mean, it, you know, when they say um, when it rains, it pours. It, for sure. <laughs> Um, like they catch a break. I'm talking about like uh, one day after the next, after like that little Cassie situation, like because you know a lot of things happen besides. So the Cassie situation happened, and then the way that they ma- they managed that situation was he didn't, she didn't sue him specifically. She sued him. She sued Revolt, and that's what forced him to resign as the um, chief office, the chief operating officer. Um, but at the oh, same wow. time, um. They dropped him, so his family was supposed to have a series as well, and they dropped that. Um, Dang, I ain't know about the series. Yeah, they had a they had a series, and then you know he had also 
they basically said that his album flopped. Um, I'm a fan of the album. I'm not going to lie. You can play that whole album through. And before all the allegations, I, I'm, I still play it. Like, I mean, right. we're not going to go there. But, I mean, if y'all can still play R. Kelly, then why can't I play Diddy? I, I agree with you. You know, I still listen well, to R. Kelly. You know what I'm saying? I, I feel like. <laughs> so that, that's what you said. Play. No, not, Diddy. Diddy okay. but not. I like music. I like great music. And I feel like, you know, a person doing something, whatever he did, you know, that doesn't defeat the fact that he still put out good music. You know what I mean? So so, so Diddy put out a whole album, right? The first album in right. over 10 years with a multitude of features. And right. when I tell you, like, you can listen through the whole album, you can, you can play the whole album through if you haven't heard it, listen to it. Mm-hmm. You can, and then I believe there was supposed to be a movie that tied along with the album, but right. but I think they might have kind of cut off on that as well. Mm-hmm. To but yeah, I just, you know, I feel bad for the man because he was on a high being one of the biggest moguls in the business. Um, also being the one of the richest black men on earth. So upsetting to see that he just took another L. Yeah, it's sad, but like you said, when it rains, it pours. Welcome back, Ray. Back, welcome man. What's back. up, Ray? Man, you back? I, I got cut out, guys. I got cut out uh-huh. when I was trying to explain what I was trying to explain, but we can move along. Move along. All right. What are we get into next? Um, infamous fashion, fashion, fashion. Um, let's talk business again still. Um, well, fashion and business. So this week was Paris Fashion Week. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you guys got a chance to take a look, but Pharrell launched his second campaign with Louis Vuitton. Um, Pharrell obviously being the precedent after Virgil, after his passing, um, is a win for the community. One, he is another person of color in charge in the as a creative director in the richest brand in the world, LVMH. Um, So that's a win for us as people of color. Um, Two, he's also declared he's a creative director. He's not a designer. Um, With that being said, I think that's a good thing for the brand for a couple amongst, you know, for a couple of things. One, he said he's a creative director. He's not a designer, but that means they bring him along for a couple of things that he's consulting the brand in terms of the fashion aspect, whether he's being the creative director and giving him the ideas, this season's scheme war was Western. Um, I don't know. Did you guys take a look at the show? Yeah, I took a yeah, look at I the saw, show. Yeah, I saw a lot, uh, a lot of it. I saw a couple guys in there that I was excited to see. Uh, so that, I was saw... exciting. that was exciting as well to see Shiloh and Shadur Sanders walking, okay. yeah. walking Paris mm-hmm. Fashion. Pusha, Pusha, Pusha was in there again. Pusha T, um, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. um, Pusha T was in there again. Um, but I want to, what I'm, what I really want to say is, Pharrell, you know, taking place of Virgil is another great accomplishment in the for people of color in the in the fashion world because we all know him it to be if not one of the best dressed men in the world, right? Um, yeah. Also, also one of the most creative from you know from his NERD days to just being a producer in general um and then also like doing soundtracks thanks you know what I mean saying? I actually I was excited to know that you know he was taking over because uh, I ain't, I was a little worried about how it was going to be without Virgil cuz you know Virgil was so hands on with everything like it was like okay is it is this the end? Did he leave enough, you know what I'm saying, for them to, you know, run off of with him being gone? So I was I was confused, you know. No, because you know, I love so I love being in the fashion world. I love seeing these people bring themselves out in the world in the work, right? Right, and right. With Virgil, Virgil being um I guess an architect. He was arch- he was an engineer and architect. Mm-hmm. Um and bringing that his art of it into Louis Vuitton. I mean into Louis Vuitton right. was and then now seeing Pharrell like incorporating like a couple things. One, you know, being a creative director, so you're consulting them in ways of what's gonna sell, 
right? What what is going to help the company profit? To what what does he want out of it? And then three, what do people want, right? And watching and looking at this collection, like a couple of things, bringing the Western trend back. So everything from cowboys to Native Americans to flares to leather and textures and and, Mm -hmm. and furs, um, everything about that, right? Then you also have the work boot, the classic Timberland. Yeah. Right? Collab with that which I think is dope. I mean, Virgil had his own version of it during his first, one of his first collections, I want to say 2019, um, that he had dropped, but it wasn't an official Timberland collab. So obviously we saw teasers of the Timberland Timberland collab throughout the week and saw it at that show. Uh, No, I think it's a little bit of everything. I mean, he incorporated the camo and then his his version would be the digi camo. Um, You know, I'm excited, especially being someone who was not in the fashion world as a as a creative director in the fashion world to transition over from music to fashion i think mm-hmm. it's dope and i would love to see more of it from other artists in the future definitely i mean i my takes on it i feel like he did a great job i think he he brought back the the old millionaire glasses which i really like the circle ones versus the square ones from 2004 and I think, exactly yep, from 2004, 2004. And I, and I also like that he kind of, like you said, he carried on what Virgil did. So we go back in time when Virgil was the creative director. Virgil took what's monumental as a shoe, which is the Air Force Ones, and made his own Air Force Ones with Louis, you know, Louis Vuitton Air Force right. Ones. And then he did with more so of a colder, colder based shoe with the Timberland. So I feel like that that was very monumental and just just different and um, as a whole. And I like when he was doing his interview, um, he was just explaining, they called him a fashion designer, right? And when we look at our culture as a whole, they always say fashion designer, fashion designer, fashion designer. But he was like, I'm not a fashion designer, I'm a creative director, which kind of put him on a different scale. Like he's explaining that, like, I know how to design fashion, but I'm more than that. And I feel like we get caught up in that, like, right? it doesn't limit him to it doesn't limit him to just being this is what you know like i you know creative genius at the right. end of the day that's 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 all i can say whether it's him virgil kanye creative genius right and then on another level like you know not just him being the you know he stepped out and got you know football players uh college players he got you know other music entertainers, you know, to actually walk in it, it made it more like diverse. You know, he made a big statement with, you know, it's not just going to be, you know, your average, you know, we're going to keep it going. I mean, he also curated a a fashion show. So an actual production, right. An actual production. It was an, it was an actual show. I mean, it it just shows you again, tapping into his, his, his mindset of all around. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. All right, y'all. Um, let's get into some of these playoff hits, though. Okay. Oh, yeah, for sure. Let's do it. Let me get it pulled up on my end. This is one of my favorite segments. Let's go. <laughs> we had some hit and misses this week. We had some hits and we had some misses. Yeah, let's talk about it. I'm going to be honest, too. You know, I'm always getting my scale of 1 to 10. Oh, my goodness. Why did yep. Trash. That whole fit trash. Your boy looks like a Nickelodeon logo. Man, I can't believe he came on out there scuba doo. He, he just got slimed. Man, I can't believe he came he on out looking like Raggy. Scuba doo scuba doo character for real, for real. Um, did you see that was it DraftKings? I wanna I wanna confirm. I believe DraftKings refunded everybody who placed bets on him. For real? Because he got yeah. hurt. Cause he got he came in the game. He came with that outfit and played like that too. Like oh, uh, <laughs> like man, I up. knew when he when he walked in with that outfit, how it was gonna be. He walked in. I man, ain't nobody win. Uh, baby food green. Yeah, that looked like a, a Nickelodeon award. Yeah, I, I wasn't really feeling that. I get that like a, a a four out of ten. I I can't even do it. <laughs> you can't even do a four. Yeah, I give him a four out of ten. I give him I'm not a magic matchy person. 
I mean, I'm normally a big fan of how Debo dress, but you know, I he, love how he dresses, but this yeah, one right he, here. With this one. Nah, you walk like a walk, like a walk in yeah, a, a uh, celery, a celery blimp, stick with tangerine on top. Yeah, I don't know what he got going. Yeah, Harris bro. With, with, with a side of ranch. We can go on on over to the Knicks. All right, the next one we got. All right, this was a hit this week. Uh, Stefan Diggs. I like the denim on denim, you know, Canadian tux with the boots and then a, a white overcoat. I thought this was real clean. Yeah. Um, I, I give, it, give it 8 out of 10. Yeah, I love that. He always still. Yeah, I wish that I love that. I I different things this season. I wouldn't say he always steps, but nine out of ten, he's usually good. For sure. like That's one person I can count on to come with it. I just, I don't, I don't see what a yeah, I definitely get like an eight. I don't see what a white coat coming from, but I, 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 I guess I give him kind of looking a like a lab coat. Yeah, it looked like a doctor. Yeah, like a doctor that I just still- came in on an emergency. I ain't feeling. I, I, I yeah. I, I mean, I, I, it looked pretty different. It's I like the denim on denim with the boots. I feel like that was a lot. It's a lot better than last week. Yeah, he came. Hard. Oh yeah, for sure. My boy Ray Ray McCloud. He doesn't miss. Boy, he doesn't miss. Yeah, now nah, that's somebody I can say that's gonna always step as well. Yeah, like, he, he steps okay. every week. That's definitely a ten. From and that. he always be on his own way, like. The show. Very yeah, different. Yeah, like with this the shirt, first of all with I, the I jacket, pop of color, and then the all black details yeah. with the gloves. Um, not for sure. I I gave him this one for sure. Yeah, for I sure. I give him like a nine out of ten with that. Yeah, I give him a nine out of ten this week. I, I say nine out of ten, and he didn't he didn't win this week for me because it's another one that's coming up that 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 always be consistent. And I and I vibe with him because he's from Alabama, which we are gonna get on him next. Boy, Benito Jones, he is something else. Man, I ain't, I ain't really feeling that one. All right, let's get into it. Benito, jo- Benito Jones, have you been watching him throughout the season and his fits? He's been coming with some wild stuff this season. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I'm he not going to lie. I've, I've heard he's a, he's a funny person to be around, too. And I think this. But he bowed this... for this. He bowed yeah, for this. Definitely bowed. First of all, it's freezing in Detroit. I don't know what he got going on. He like he finna go fishing. I mean, I wasn't a big fan of yeah. it. I get that like a four out of ten. All right, what you were saying about this fit, Ray? I said I think he owns something, if I'm not mistaken, like a company or something. But I'm not. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Yeah, um, we ain't gonna say that, then. If we ain't a hundred percent sure, we, we gonna we gonna. Well, oh. I gave him like a, I gave him like a four out of ten. What you give him, Seth? Hello. I give him. I give him like a. I give him a five. It's different. He a big guy. You gotta. You gotta kind of give give slack to the bigger guys like that. I mean, he played well, um, as well too. So, I give him a five. Uh, maybe a five. What five about you, Mr. One out of ten. I give out a five. This is giving me swamp outfit. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. I'm, um, this isn't the first time he wore overalls this season like that either. So I think he's kind of doing something with this. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So he but, does. He does. Um, what I'm looking at on his Instagram, he does. He's an owner of Nine to Five Forms. I'm not sure what it is, but okay. I think that's where the the look is probably coming from. Uh, I don't know too much information okay. on the Nine to Five Forms. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Nine to Five Forms. Where is he from again? I don't know where he's from. He got to be a country boy, though. Wearing stuff Definitely. like that. No, because like I said, that's not the first time he wore overalls this season either. So he has to be. Because I remember he's from another. Uh, he had did another, <laughs> um, look right. with overalls. Go to, go to the next fit, right? He's from Mississippi, and he went to Ole Miss. Makes sense. Makes plenty yeah, of that sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Farms is a community. Yeah, it's sure. a workman's community. For uh, forming, so yeah, oh, it makes, makes sense. sense. Makes sense. Makes All right. sense. Moving on, moving on. We got your boy got David that. Montgomery. David Montgomery, look, that's the homie. Um, he doesn't really dress, but I'm, I'm, I like this. I'm gonna give this one to him because he actually showed out for him. He doesn't really dress for game days, but I'm gonna give him this one. I like this look he did with the cargos, uh, with the denim, the, the at the 
gray wash denim with the vet with the varsity jacket you know he could have tucked the shirt in you know um but i like this i think this was different for him but i do like it i'd probably give it like a seven uh yeah, yeah i see where I he agree. was going with it you know it, it's it's decent I mean, I give, him, I give him a seven, uh, eight. Like you said before, if you look at his past, his past outfits, he's not a big dresser. Um, he don't take a yeah. huge right. pride in dressing. He's not a big dresser. Um, he's, he's like I'm not a fan in the pants, though. He could have probably went with some dress pants or something, maybe something different than that. And t- like yes, you said, t- I will t- say, I will say, this is the first time I've seen a man wear those type of pants. I've only seen women wear those pants. Yeah. And he looks like he's kind of short, so. Yeah, he is pretty um, short, too. He barely at the six mark. We yeah. don't want to say short. He's just, he's just not a six-footer. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. I mean, he's a running back. What you expect? Neil, I like this one. This is a little casual for him, though. He usually has a fit, gets a fit off. Um. This is I my like favorite pants. one for this I just week. feel I like to you. the shirt proportion to the pants with the jacket – it's throwing me off. Um, I get what he's trying to do here with the whole matching the sh- shirt and the shoes. And the shoes, yeah. Yeah. It's it's if you're not familiar, it's called a sandwich rule where two out of th- like two items you're wearing match. Right. Um, but yeah, the shirt I feel like is a little small on him. I mean, not the shirt, the jacket. I feel like the jacket's a little sh- short and small on him. Yeah, I think that's the look he was going for, like that crop style. Um, a lot of people trying to, you know, that's what's saying right now, that crop style. I don't, I, but it doesn't look right on everybody. I can't no, say that. You have to proportion it correctly. Exactly. That's 100% correct. I don't, it, 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 is, I don't think this is pro- proportioned correctly. Yeah, and, and he looks, yeah, he look kind of, I don't know, Brad. Some stuff look different on people depending on how you built. I mean, and then you got to take in consideration the angle of the picture too. But probably, but I see what he was going with. It's decent. I'm a I'm a big fan of those pants he got on. Oh, the but, pants are fire. I think yeah, he the pants done. fire definitely. I think, honestly, this I don't my know favorite. what kind of boost those are. They look pretty nice too. This my but you know uh, what you get out one out of one out of ten. Six. Six. Dang a six. Not I, I give him about a seven. It it wasn't a hit to me. It got to be a hit to be a seven. It wasn't a hit. It was, like, enough to talk about, but not enough to, like, oh, this was it. Yeah, 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 for sure. All right, so this looked like um, this, this – I don't want to say another Swamp Monster outfit, but I wasn't a fan of this one. It was I'm def- not a fan of this at all. I'm not a fan of this. This is a lot going on. Like, I like that the pants match his hair, which I thought was cool. But the sweater with the pants together, I think it's doing way too much. Definitely. Yeah, it's just too much going on. It's it's yeah, all over the place. It's, it's a lot going on, and I couldn't do Like, I don't know if this was intentional or not intentional, um, but it's not. This is a miss for me. Yeah, it's definitely a miss for me as well. I feel like uh, it's just too much going on, especially wow. with the – <clears throat> the the you know that stone wash loud jeans and the the sweater it's just too much and i don't know i'm not a big i'm not a fan of those shoes either i just feel like yeah you know sometimes it, people try to be so different that it just don't turn out right not a fan three out of ten three out of ten dang yeah i, I probably have to go with you on that i give them a three out of ten as well i give them a zero out of ten is Piss poor, terrible. <laughs> What's your thoughts on this? Hey, zero out of zero. zero. This is terrible. Zero out of ten. I ain't gonna give no love. I, bro, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be okay. honest with you. Christmas are already over. Just... I, I, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm a person of um. Look, you could have, you could have just. I'd rather not get that negative attention. I'd rather just put on some sweatpants, call it or sweat, a sweatsuit, or like a two. Like I'll, I'll just call put in a cord, which is like two piece, a matching set. Before I put that that on. Yeah, for sure. Who else we got? Roquan. Okay. Tough. Okay, tough. cowboy. This tough. is tough. I like it. Um, that jacket is is a bally jacket. It's a denim with snakeskin detail. 
with the mm-hmm. cowboy hat, the boots, the flares. Um, I'm loving this. I'm glad, you know, he's from Georgia, I believe. Yeah, Georgia. Right? Where's he? Yeah, he's from Georgia. Um, so that little, the country in him works. Um, uh, but no, I, I'll give him a nine on this one. This one was a good look. Yeah, definitely. I give him like an eight. I like how uh he got the green on the denim. That looks real. I do like the green snakeskin that pops it out. Yeah, that's dope. Uh, I like the hat. Very different. I like that. Yeah, I, and I it give fits him. him. I give him a nine it does. as well. I give him a nine. Why? Yeah. Um, about this? I I think I like the look. To be honest, it's it's different. I think you did some a similar look like this. What when this was like last year, if I'm not mistaken. With one of your players, um, Jalen had a yeah, Jalen had a cowboy flare boot, similar, um, not the same, but a similar aesthetic with yeah, the Western not, wear. And um, I like last it. season, well, this current season, yeah, I, I like the look. I mean, I couldn't pull nothing off like this, but I just like it's it's very creative on, on how he did it and whoever styled him. So I think that's it for one oh, more, we got one, one more. more. All right, OBJ with the cowhide. Might I add? An Hermes bag to match the jacket. It's chef's kiss. That was that was immaculate. Hey, I gotta give bro a ten out of ten, man. Yeah, I got to. I gotta give him a ten out of ten. But what? Man, Do that you pe- have a of his uh, cleats as well. No, I don't. The uh, Iris and cleats. Actually, him. I don't know if you guys saw that, but him and Ray Ray McLeod had the. Uh, he had an Iris and cleats. They had Allen Iverson inspired cleats for the game. Yeah, that was dope. Um, another another Western look. Look, obviously you can see that trend coming around this this current season. Yeah, that that pastel blue that was that was pretty dope. That set it off with the Hermes. Oh yeah, he went off with that. I think that's it for infamous fits. Ty, what you got for the sports world for us today? Man, it's been so much going on. Let's see what we're going to start off with today. Um, All right, so first, we got another black coach hired for the Las Vegas Raiders, uh, Antonio Pierce. Um, He's picking up after Josh McDaniels. He was released in week nine. when he was when he took over after week nine, uh, Vegas allowed the less yards per game. They also had the most uh, score scores on defense as well. So uh, he did pretty good, and they just announced that he'll be taking over as the head coach. So, so I mean, question: Do you feel like um, I don't know if you checked out Max Crosby's interview where he basically mm-hmm. said. If he's not the if he's not the coach, um, out of here. Um, do you think that has an influence to that decision? Definitely. I mean, I feel like especially when one of your leaders like uh, Crosby, when he when he speaks, I think that that holds a lot of weight. So, you know, him coming in saying that, I definitely agree that it made some type of influence on that call. No, I agree. You, as well, you know, too. you want to make sure that your players are happy. Yeah, I agree as well, too. I mean, Max Crosby is one of the uh, top defense alignment in the league. So just having somebody deep, like that. Yeah, that D this defense alignment. And I, and I think, like, as a whole, just with the league and stuff like that, they, they're going to, you know, they're understanding. Like, if Af- most of the – if you if you say the percentage of African-Americans that play in the league, it's, it's really 75% of the league is African-American. And I think that they're seeing now that these guys are just not assistant coaches and position coaches. These guys can actually lead a team uh, to, you know, maybe a Super Bowl, you know, champions and, and different things like that. So I think they're gearing towards that. I think I seen a commercial that he just did uh, where they were just kind of announcing that he was the coach and he had on his uh, all black Air Force Ones, which kind of funny. Kind of like a little giggle for for the for the press and different things like that, but I, I like yeah, seeing he means, that. Biz- he means business. He, he means business. <laughs> Speaking of uh, Crosby, uh, didn't he just have an uh, operation done on his uh, leg? I, I didn't hear about that one. 
I didn't hear about that. Yeah, he just he just had an operation. Did like uh, a couple of days ago. Oh yeah, yeah. After the uh, he last, posted on his last, last game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I did see that. Yeah. I think it was his knee, mm-hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah, it's his knee. Yeah. It was something that was uh, lingering over the season, but uh, he seems to be doing well. He posted the other day and just you know let everybody know that everything went well. Awesome. Yeah, and uh, in other news, uh, we have Jared Mayo, the New England coach, you know, saying that he does see color. And if you don't see color, then you don't see racism. So, you know, I definitely agree with him on that because you can't act like it's something that you don't see because if you don't see it, the issue will never be resolved and it'll never be addressed. You know what I mean? So I definitely get where he was coming from. Uh, how do you guys feel about that? Uh, Missy, you go. I agree because, uh, you know, being a person of color, just being around people who are white, Caucasian, they're never going to understand what we go through as people of color, whether it's black who obviously went through before everybody else or whether it's me being Asian, they're still not going to understand. You know, you have, for example, um, we have white privilege, we have we have white privilege and as a woman of a, of color, I'm like bottom of the barrel compared to somebody to the next person, right? And mm-hmm. people don't people are never gonna understand that. That's why to me it's like speaking to a white person and they try to be relatable to something. It's kind of hard to be relatable with you. I have a tradition and culture in another language. My family is from another country. You are not. How? are we ever going to be relatable in the same sense, right? So now right, we're, talking, right. we're talking about the coaches. And mind you, I'm a woman, so I'm on the bottom of the barrel compared to a black man, right? Because right. we get paid we get paid less than y'all do, if, if you want to go by statistics. Um, right. But saying that to say, like, being a person of color in the league, it's now getting there where we have – black women as coaches and assistant coaches and as referees where we're getting minority women as coaches and are on the uh on the staff as well so i think it takes it i mean the game has been going on for what 100 years now of nfl football so it's taken 100 years before we are acclimated with people of color at in those positions what's your take ray uh, my take is is kind of sort of the same thing, man. Um, just how she hit on it. It's like a lot of people always say, you know, that are not the minorities of the world. They'll say, hey, I don't see color, which you got to see color because it's a lot of stuff that goes on. Just like him being a black coach. He was the first black coach, which since what, 19 forever. He's the first black, what, right? He's the black, first black coach for the New England Patriots ever. So it's like. You know, it's it's certain things that come with that, certain stigmatizations. You got to live up to certain things because Bill Belichick did a great job when he was there. And he's just kind of speaking out. And a lot of people don't. And NFL, the the sport of the NFL is a different different sport, meaning they're like when the kneeling thing was going on, a lot of black people didn't kneel. And Kaepernick was the only person. And him being able to get that position, and that's the first thing that he says, it shows a lot about him and what he believed in. And it kind of let the other coaches know, you know, other black coaches know, like, hey, stand on that. Like, nothing against Mike Tom, Mike, um, Mike Tomlin, Mike Tomlin, but he's not he, – he never expressed besides, you know, on a few interviews and things like that. But this man said – Well said. Okay, so with that being said, okay, uh, the league is changed and it's becoming more diverse, especially in the coaching area. Do you guys – ever see a black owner of one of these teams happening in the future? Uh, don't the Williams of Dolphins? The Williams sisters have a part ownership of the Miami Dolphins. Yeah, yeah. They do, they do, but I'm saying like full ownership, you know, and they're becoming that's, more that's of a... not gonna happen anytime soon because you gotta realize a lot of this is handed down and it's generational. So that's not gonna happen anytime soon. Maybe in the next what fifty years or so, possibly. But to talk about it now, the Venus sisters do have a part ownership of the Dolphins. That's a start. Yeah, and that's dope. That's powerful, as you know, two black women to you know have part ownership in a- the most powerful black athletes in the world. 
Definitely. I definitely got to agree with you on that. They influenced me a lot growing up, you know, watching them be so resilient in what they do. Uh, speaking of resilience, man, let me break this down to y'all. Have y'all heard about uh, Cam McCormick uh, coming back to Miami for his ninth season? That's wild. So, so this is just, okay, look, ninth season in college playing football because you had injuries. Right. Okay, you got two choices. Give it up. Like, one, do you do you have a, a scholarship to be playing this whole time? Like, how are you still in school? Are you <laughs> getting a master's? Right. I would hope that if you're you're still in school after nine years, I hope this man has a master's so that <laughs> so that he can try to pursue pursue the league. And if he doesn't make it, he got a master's to fall fall back to. Because you cannot tell me that you are ninth season in college trying to redeem yourself to <laughs> to declare the draft. Like who is on his corner not telling who is in his show on his corner in his you know not guiding him properly. The man graduated high school in 2016. He's 25 years old. Like, this is insane. Like, I can't believe that he's still playing football. And, like, I, I remember we talked uh, a couple of weeks ago. We was talking about, do you guys feel like that's kind of like an advantage for you to be playing with, you know, 18, 19-year-olds out there and you're, like, 25? How is that an advantage? You would think, I mean, <clears throat> this goes for any league. Like, obviously, the younger, the better, because it's like the high turnover of older accident injury, injury prone. So if you're old and you're injury prone, why would we recruit you if we have somebody fresh and new who's not, who isn't as aged as you, who is less injury prone or like, like season ending injury prone? Well, with, with me, I feel like uh, experience definitely is an advantage. I don't think it benefits him to do that. I don't think it benefits him to do that. I don't understand. I don't understand why he had declared. If you if you really try to make it to the league, you should have just declared and or at least go and um, sign up for the combine. Hey, that's a route. That's I what I'm talking about. In, I hope you get your masters because who's who's paying for this college? I mean, we talk about, you know, COVID and how it affected certain people, how it helped certain people and how it, you know, messed up a lot of things. But in his situation, he graduated 2016. He went to Oregon. He got redshirted. The next year he played, he got injured. Uh, he got an injury year. Uh, he like got an injury year. Then COVID came. They gave him an extra two years. So, I mean, I feel like he really just took full advantage of the opportunity. So he actually pushed it. He pushed it to the max. Nine years? Crazy. There, it's a conditioning for conditioning four class, then after two. Man, that's crazy. So do, do you feel like the league will actually, you know, lean towards his story a little bit more and try to give him a shot? No. But you got to look at it this way. So if you enter the league, if you enter the league, right, of say, so th obviously he's playing this season and he's not declared for draft. So say you declare next year. So then next year you're going to be 26 declaring for the draft, right? And then but then you're 26 declaring. But then right. you're comparing a 26-year-old to a 22-year-old. That's what I'm trying to say. And then if you do get picked, right, and you go to a team, you're going to start off with your rookie contract and be on the practice squad for how many years before you actually even play as a starter. Unless you are that person, because if you were that person, if you were that person, you would already be recruited. Just saying. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, speaking of, you know, the NFL, man, let's get into these playoff games, man. Okay, so first we're going to start off with uh, Baltimore versus Houston. Uh, CJ Starr ended off with <laughs> – Okay, the final score was 34 to 10. CJ Starr ended with uh, 175 yards when he was 19 for 33. Uh, Lamar Jackson ended the game uh, 16 for 22, 152 yards and two touchdowns. How y'all feel about that game? Yeah. He's the highest for a reason. He's the highest paid quarterback. Man, bro, the man had a hundred yard. He had a hundred rushing yards. Like that's insane. 
a hundred rushing yards. But be real though, do you think that he gonna take them to the Super Bowl running the ball like that? A hundred yards? You think he's gonna go to the Super Bowl? No question. I agree. I mean, okay. I feel like they the most. I feel like they're the most suitable for the Super Bowl. Ravens are going to the, to the Super Bowl, and it's gonna be between, it's gonna be between the 49ers or the Chiefs, and I think they're gonna play the 49ers. I don't know, man. The 49ers look kind of suspect without Debo, but we're gonna get into that. We're gonna get ready to get into that. Uh, okay, so next we're gonna go into the Packers versus the 49ers. The final score of that game was. The 49ers took it 24 to 21. It was a hard fought game. That was a um, to watch. Man, hey, I love that look game. On that their was, faces after in the last two minutes, their look on their faces was was terrible. Okay. Uh Jordan Love ended the game. Jordan Love ended the game 21 for 34 on pass attempts. Uh 194 yards passing, two touchdowns and two interceptions. Uh, Brock Purdy ended the game 23-39, 252 yards and one touchdown. Um, it was a it was a slow fist. It was a nice game to watch. I watched that whole game from start to finish. Uh, I felt like the Packers made a statement. I feel like Jordan Love made a statement. You know, I feel like he he earned his keep. I feel like he showed them that hey, y'all found y'all quarterback. Uh, for sure. I mean, you got, first of all, he was under a rod for so long. So I would hope he had took some notes from him for sure. Absolutely. That's, that's a franchise quarterback without a doubt. There was a lot of reference to, to uh, his plays like Brett Favre's. Um, Definitely. A lot of his, some of some of the similar movements he was making. Yeah. I felt like uh, he was so talented that it kind of hurt him in the game because he had so much arm strength to the point to where, he was relying on his arm strength and he wasn't stepping into the passes and he was doing a lot of wild stuff like throwing the ball off his back foot and, you know, slanging the ball sideways and, you know, playing a little weird. And it caused a lot of turnovers, which he had two interceptions and those were two critical interceptions. So, yeah. And uh, as far as Brock Purdy, I felt like uh, with Debo going down early, I felt like, that shook up their whole game. I feel like that exposed that if Purdy, Christian McCaffrey, and Debo Samuel, that three-headed monster between them two, I feel like if one of them go down, like they're very vulnerable. So I feel like they exposed that. So they'll have to get that together. Uh, I kind of felt like it was going to be something with Debo when I seen that outfit earlier. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, that was a – Tough game. And then uh, today we had uh, the Buccaneers against the Lions. Um, I really felt like, honestly, I felt like Baker Mayfield was going to pull it. I had a lot of faith in Baker Mayfield, but I just got a thing against the Lions. I don't know why. Because I, I guess cause they just been so, I don't know. I don't know, man. I they, they had a good team this season, not going to lie. I just think they need a little more. They, they're they not going to make the Super Bowl. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you that much. Yeah, it was a tough game. Um, but they have a lot of opportunity. I will give them that. They definitely do have a lot of opportunity to make it to next year's Super Bowl. Possibly. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, no, this year, no. They, yeah, I don't, I don't see it. I mean, I feel like they, they definitely are a good growing organization, but – um yeah but the game ended up being 31 to 23 uh with the Detroit Lions taking that dub I felt like uh Jared Goff had a pretty solid game uh he was 30 for 43 on pass attempts uh 289 passing yards and two touchdowns I felt like that was a pretty solid game Uh, what more can you ask for I mean I know on the Bucks side I know Mike Evans he had a Great game. He had eight receptions for 147 yards and a touchdown. Um, I feel like for him to be, you know, deep into his career as he is, I feel like he's still showing up as well. Um, very tough game. I, I hate the fact that they you know, took that L, but, hey, another one bites the dust. Detroit moves on. I'm very proud of them guys. Uh, 
I don't know how far they're going to go, but we're going to see. We're going to ride the wave until they go away. And finally, last but not least, we had the Kansas City Chiefs going against the Buffs. Uh, Kansas took the dub again. Uh, it was 27 to 24. Uh, Patrick Mahomes was great. 17 for 23, 215 yards. Uh, Josh Allen was 26 for 39, 186 yards and a touchdown. Um, that was a good game. That was a very good game. I, I mean, it was. I didn't expect nothing less than what I saw. No, that was that was definitely yeah. I mean, I thought the Bills were gonna take it. I'm not gonna lie, but the Chiefs <laughs> came out winning. So it is what it is. Yeah, that was a tough one to watch too. I'm not like I'll give it that. That was a tough one to watch because that 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 happened in the last quarter. Definitely, and I mean, I feel like. Josh Allen and the Bills, I feel like that that's a good organization as well. And I feel like once they, you know, pick up a couple more pieces, maybe when they uh, draft, when they, when they enter the draft, hopefully they get some good picks because they like a couple players away from, you know, being a very, very dominant they team. They taking over the fifth year they made it to the playoffs. Man, that's I can't it. believe. Josh Allen has, made, has taken them to the playoffs. I mean, I I feel like they had a questionable uh, call. They went, they tried to do a fake punt, and uh, they tried to do a fake punt with Demar Hamlin. I I really want to understand. I felt like that was a terrible call, like on the coaches' behalf. I mean, you got to look at where you at. You got to look at where you are on the field. You got to look at Demar Hamlin not being a person that handles the ball. Like, so I don't know. I felt like that was a Call, but overall, I feel like it was a good game, hard fought game. Uh, I don't know how far Patrick Mahomes gonna get. You can't never doubt Patrick Mahomes. You can't never sleep on him. You know he always come out on top. I gotta give him that. So we'll just see how far the Chiefs go with this. You know, I feel like it's either gonna be out of them and the Forty ers to go against the uh, the Ravens in the championship or the Super Bowl. So. Yeah, and other news, that's it with the sports. That's uh, it for today. Thank you for joining us for Daily 7. That's a wrap. Whenever you can, make sure you like, comment, share, post, and subscribe. Definitely. Um, Please subscribe. All of our IG handles are on the bottom. Make sure you follow us. Okay, and make sure you guys follow the TR7 picks. Uh, I'll be giving you guys... Uh, a lot of picks, and I'll be posting some of the stuff that I put in and some of the winnings that I have. So, y'all, please be on the lookout for that. Uh, we're going to drop the link for that as well. And, you know, once again, comment, like, subscribe, follow us on our pages, and we appreciate you guys, and God bless.